Hey, this is uh, Tilda from Truck 10. Um, today we're going to talk to you about commercial storefront doors. I uh, talk about how to recognize uh, the two different types, um, what to do, what not to do, and um, some different techniques on how to force this. Uh, the most important thing uh, that we want to remember with this door is that we don't immediately want to come up and break the glass. That's an easy way to get in, however, it really limits our ability to affect the flow path. Once, once we open this door or break this glass, we have a huge ventilation opening now that's just going to feed the fire. If our fire attack crews aren't ready to go, this fire is just going to get bigger. So we want to avoid breaking glass at all costs. Not to say that we're not going to do it, um, but as far as techniques goes, it's going to be down there um, after using the irons, the K-tool, or a couple other techniques we're going to talk about. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the door frame and the door itself. Uh, these are typically referred to as commercial storefront doors. Uh, they're aluminum frame or metal frame glass panel doors. It's a thicker gauge metal, so it's not going to bend too easy. The glass, depending on when it was installed, is either going to be plate glass, tempered, or safety glass. The new code for the city of Sacramento, any new construction, is going to have safety glass, which is the same glass that's in your front windshield. If it's tempered and you break it, it'll break up into a bunch of little pieces. And if it's plate, obviously it's gonna be bigger chunks. So this glass actually only goes in, it's set into this frame right to here. Most people think that the glass goes all the way to this end here, but it doesn't, it actually stops right here. So what they do is they put the glass in, then they take this piece of metal right there, and they press it in. So <clears throat> the next thing that we're looking at, we looked at the frame, we looked at the door, the uh, last thing we want to look at is the locking mechanism. Now, there's only really one thing that you want to look at as you're approaching this door. There's two different style locking mechanisms. One is the mortise lock, the other one is panic hardware. And the way to tell the difference most of the time is by looking at this cylinder right here. If this cylinder looks like it does right now, it's just circle and there's a little cylinder guard around this, you know that it's a mortise lock. And right here you can see the deadbolt that gets thrown in there. Now that throw is about two inches long. There's two different styles. There's either a solid, solid bolt, bolt that goes through or there's a hook. Now if you walk up to this lock and it, it's got a rectangle guard around it so it'll still have this circular cylinder but around it will be a rectangular guard, you know it's Panic Hardware. And the locking mechanisms for Panic Hardware are gonna be two different locations. One will be down here and the threshold of the door. There'll be a pin from the door that goes into the bottom of the threshold. The second mechanism, and this is not always true, but most doors that have been installed in the last 10 years have this. There's a pin that comes down from the frame and it sits into the channel of the door. So every time that door locks, it locks the channel here and there's a pin that goes down into the threshold. So if you were to walk up and use irons, uh, like you normally would on an outward swinging door, you would actually be forcing it from the, the furthest point where the uh, resistance is. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about a couple different forcible entry techniques. The first thing that we want to start with is the amount of damage that we cause to a building or a door should directly relate to the type of emergency that we're going to. If this is just an alarm and for whatever reason we need to get in here, when we break all this glass and destroy this guy's door, it's not going to be relative to the type of emergency we're gonna do. We might wanna take a little more time, cause a little less damage. So uh, one of the techniques that causes the least amount of damage is a through lock technique. We have a K2 on all the trucks, and it's a simple tool. The sleeve comes over the, the cylinder here. You insert your ads, you secure the K tool over the cylinder, and then you pull down or pull up, and what happens is this part right here actually gets removed from the door and you have a little tool that comes with the kit and you can reach in there and unlock the door, okay? All they have to do at this point is just go and replace this lock. Another way, um, if it's panic hardware, most panic hardware has to be installed from 36 inches from the ground to 44 inches high. A lot of us carry a tool uh, that I don't have on me right now and it's a wire tool that you can actually slip through these two door frames, reach around and you can pull back and it will actually release the Panic Hardware. Panic Hardware only needs 10 pounds of pressure for it to, to release. Those are two through the lock methods. Now, if we're gonna use the irons, um, the 
It's an outward swinging door, so with an outward swinging door, we always want to start with the ads and the iron. As far as the gap goes, if you look right here, there's a pretty good gap in between these two doors for us to stick the ads in. We would stick the ads in as close to the locking mechanism as possible, pull down and towards our body, and that deadbolt should pop right open. If this is panic hardware, we can use that same technique um, with starting with our ads, we would just start higher. And we would start up here, or we might even start right up here at the top. And the same thing down here. We would bring our ads down here to create the leverage, or we could even put our ads down here, lift up on the ads, and the pin will actually pop out. Another technique, which is kind of our least preferred technique, because we lose the ability to control the building with ventilation, is actually breaking the glass. Um, if we have to break the glass, um, and it's uh, plate glass, we want to break this glass, we want to remove all of the large pieces out of the way so it doesn't cut the engine along with if it's tempered too. Um, we need to remember to remove the handles on both sides so it's somewhat of an easy way in and an easy way out. If it's safety glass, we can make a small cut about three feet long right down the middle that will take out the strength of that window or that glass. We can use our pick bury our pick in the glass and actually pop it right out of the frame. It works pretty easy. Another technique that we have um, with the cirque saw, um, it's just another option is we can actually come in here and we could cut this deadbolt right here with the cirque saw blade. One of the things that you've got to be cautioned about that is if this gap is not big enough, you can make it bigger with either inserting a wedge up top or down below. But if this gap is too small, the door is going to get caught on the, um, the actual blade of the surface saw. Okay, so that's a brief description um, of this door, how it's made, the two different style of locking mechanisms that we have, which are a mortise lock, like the one we have here, or panic hardware lock, which is locked on the bottom and the top, and you can tell because there's a rectangular guard around the cylinder lock. Uh, we also talked about a few different techniques to get in here through the lock, using the irons and even the cirque saw if we have to. One technique is not better than the other, it just depends on the type of emergency that you're at.